Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, June 1st, and I have a question for you. Do you ever just want to give up? I don't mean that in a suicidal way, but do you ever have those moments when you just feel physically and emotionally exhausted and like you just can't give anymore? Those times that come when everything happening in our families, plus all the stress at work, plus the various demands on our time and our energy that are placed upon us by our friends, the organizations we belong to, our church, our society at large, all combine to lead us to feeling overwhelmed and like we, we just can't do any more and we want to give up. I'm guessing that most of you have such moments. I certainly have such moments myself sometimes multiple times during the course of a day. But when we understand them correctly, I believe such moments, even if they are painful and difficult, point us to something that is essential to our life in Christ, essential to our spiritual well-being. And that something, to use the biblical phrase, is poverty of spirit. When Jesus talks about being poor in spirit, he means not being so full of ourselves that we leave room and space for God. We're culturally conditioned to do everything largely on our own, with our own energy, our own power, our own resources. I know I'm tempted to approach my daily life very often just sort of as if I were a one-man army and I have to do this on my own or it will not happen. But when I give way to that, I very quickly realize that I don't have the resources, I don't have the power or the energy to do all that I feel called to do. And here's the thing, I don't need to do it on my own. You don't need to do it on your own. We weren't created to be isolated armies of one. We are made to work with God and to allow God's power and God's energy to flow through us so that we're not on our own and we don't need to get to that place of just complete exhaustion. The phrase, let go and let God, is both overused and under-practiced. But that phrase gets at what I'm trying to talk about today, because it reminds us of this great spiritual truth, that we are deeply connected to God, and we do not have to get through life on our own, but that God is there always within us and around us, providing us the grace, the energy, the power that we need moment by moment, if we will just allow ourselves to be open to that. That phrase, let go and let God, is often used in 12-step programs because addicts really understand in a very visceral way how much they need God. They realize they're powerless over their addiction and they need that grace just to survive. But the truth is applicable to all of us. If we don't want to burn out and be miserable and constantly exhausted and depleted, then we will learn to find ways to let go and let God and not do it on our own. I don't think there's any one recipe to do that, but there are several factors that I think are important in that kind of spiritual practice that I just want to, to share with you briefly right now. Uh, the first is awareness, which I talk about a lot, but it begins by just being aware when we are feeling burnt out, when we are feeling like there's just no more fuel in the tank, we are exhausted. Rather than trying to avoid that feeling or to drug it away or to distract ourselves, it's important just to be aware of how we're feeling, what we're experiencing, so that if in fact we are trying to do everything on our own, and if in fact we are feeling overwhelmed, we need to be aware of it. 
The second factor that I think is really so helpful and important is some kind of resting prayer. And I don't want to get all caught up in techniques and methods because the technique and the method is secondary. What matters is that we find ways to rest in God. If we're resting in God, that will mean that we're probably in some sort of relaxed physical state, that we're able to breathe and be aware of our breathing, uh, that we are stopping and being still, and that we're doing it deliberately in God's presence, whether we feel that presence or not. There are different approaches to this, and really the approach that matters is the approach that works for you and for each one of us. But we want to find ways to rest in God on a regular, daily basis. And resting means just that. If you go to prayer and you come away with a list of 20 things you need to improve in your lives, that's not resting prayer. If you go into prayer and come out of it with a to-do list that's even greater than you had before you went in, that is not resting prayer. Resting prayer doesn't accomplish anything. It allows us to rest in God. God whose power, whose strength, whose energy is so much greater than ours. The third component to to letting go and letting God is living in the moment. Because here's the thing, whatever grace God is gonna give to me, God's gonna give to me right now. Literally, as I am making this recording, that is where God is going to meet me. God's gonna give me energy, if God's gonna give me clarity or insight, God's gonna do it right now. Yesterday has already happened. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I've got lots to do the rest of today. I've got lots to do tomorrow, the day after that, and on, on, and on. But that doesn't matter. The way we meet God is in the present moment. So when we can be aware of ourselves, and when we can practice resting prayer, and when we can, as much as possible, be in the moment so that we can receive whatever God will give us in this moment, then we are in a much better place. Then we really can allow God's spirit to move through us and to fill us with the presence, the grace, and above all, the love of God, which is just endless and inexhaustible. Sometimes it's good just to give up. Maybe we need to give up on a regular basis and allow ourselves to just be who we are. Finite human beings loved infinitely by an infinite God. If we have that kind of poverty of spirit, if we have that kind of humility, then there is no end to all that God can and will give to us. I'm sharing this with you just a few days before we celebrate the great Feast of Pentecost, the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. And there's no better time to remember that if we're going to receive that Spirit, we need to open up and make sure there is space for God's Spirit to flow. Whatever word we want to use, poverty of spirit, humility, we want to give up and allow God to be God. I hope you have a blessed week. God loves you. I love you. Peace.